My full name is Musina Dariga. I am a teacher of public health and biostatistics at Semi State Medical University, Kazakhstan. In today's lecture, I want to describe survival analysis. In my opinion, it will be important for you in your professional career. So, I believe that you enjoy this part. Welcome to my video. Today, I am going to provide information about survival analysis and survival curve. What is survival analysis? Survival analysis is generally defined as a set of methods for analyzing data, where outcome variable is time, until the occurrence of an event of interest. The event can be death, occurrence of a disease, marriage, divorce, and so on. The time to event or survival time can be measured in days, weeks, and years. For example, if the event of interest is heart attack, then survival time can be the time in years until develops a heart attack. Survival analysis is an important element of reasoning from data. Applied in a number of fields, it has become particularly useful in medicine to estimate the survival rate of patients on the basis of their condition, examination results and undergoing treatment. A survival curve is a statistical picture of the survival experience of some group of patients in the form of graph showing the percentage surviving versus time. The best known way to estimate your prognosis is to compare it to the experience of other patients in a similar situation treated similarly, as represented by a survival curve. You will often find survival curves inhabiting technical papers in the medical literature, and some understanding of these curves is essential to understanding the technical literature. But survival curves have subtleties and important limitations, and are very easily misinterpreted, often in the direction of underestimating hope. Understanding survival curves will help clarify your thinking about treatment choices as well as about prognosis. In survival analysis, we use information on event status and follow-up time to estimate the survival function. Consider a 20-year prospective study of patient survival following a myocardial infraction. In this study, the outcome is all-cause mortality and the survival function, or survival curve, might be depicted in the figure below. The horizontal axis represents time in years, and the vertical axis shows the probability of surviving or the proportion of people surviving. At time zero, the survival probability is 1, or 100% of the participants are alive. At two years, the probability of survival is approximately 0.83, or 83%. At 10 years, the probability of survival is approximately 0.85, or 85%. The median survival is approximately 11 years. A flat survival curve, i.e. one that stays close to 1, suggests very good survival whereas the survival curve that drops sharply towards zero suggests poor survival. Look at the video how to read survival curves. The Kaplan-Meier method is a non-parameter method used to estimate the survival probability from observed survival times. Kaplan-Meier survival analysis. There are many situations in which you would want to examine the distribution of times between two events. The Kaplan-Meier model is based on estimating conditional probabilities at each time point, when an event occurs and taking the product limit of those probabilities to estimate the survival rate at each point in time. Does a new treatment for AIDS have any therapeutic benefit in extending life? You could conduct a study using two groups of AIDS patients, one receiving traditional therapy and other receiving the experimental treatment. 
Constructing a coupling Mari model from the data would allow you to compare overall survival rates between the two groups to determine whether the experimental treatment is an improvement over the traditional therapy. You can also plot the survival or hazard functions and compare them visually for more detailed information. The next example was taken from article. Article was published in 2017. Topic of the article is actual over 10 year survival after liver resection for patients with intrahepatic carcinoma. Partial hepatectomy is a potentially curative therapy for intrahepatic cholangia carcinoma. Unfortunately, the overall surgical prognosis remains dismal and the actual 10-year survival hasn't been reported. This study aimed to document 10-year actual survival rates, identify the prognostic factors associated with 10-year survival rate, and analyze the characteristics of patients who survived more than 10 years. Among 251 patients who underwent curative liver resection for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma between 2003 and 2006 at the Eastern Hepatobiliary Surgery Hospital, 21 patients survived more than 10 years. It is 8.4%. The 5, 7 and 10 year overall survival rates were 32.3%, 22.3% and 8.4% respectively. In conclusion, a 10-year survival after liver resection for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma is possible and can be expected in approximately 8.4% of patients. The next article was published in Cancer Medicine Journal in May 2017. So, if you are interested in this publication, go on to PubMed. Website is given. The next example. Acute kidney injury is a severe complication associated with abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. In this study, scientists evaluated the incidence, risk factors and in-hospital mortality of acute kidney injury in patients after the abdominal aortic aneurysm repair surgery. This study demonstrates that one-third of abdominal aortic aneurysm patients can develop acute kidney injury after aneurysm repair surgery and that severity of acute kidney injury and ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm status are associated with increased in-hospital mortality in abdominal aortic aneurysm patients who develop post-operative acute kidney injury. Ok, my lecture is over. I hope in future you will be able to use survival analysis in your research. Thanks a lot for paying attention. Goodbye.